Nehemiah chapter 10. Those who sealed it were Nehemiah the governor, the son of Hakaliah, Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Pashur, Amariah, Melchijah, Hattush, Shebaniah, Maluk, Harim, Miramoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Ginathon, Barak, Meshalem, Abijah, Majamin, Meaziah, Bilgai, and Shemaiah. These were the priests. The Levites, Jeshua, son of Azaniah, Binuai, of the sons of Hanadad, Kadmiel, and their associates, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Kalita, Peliah, Hanan, Micah, Rehob, Hashabiah, Zakur, Sherebiah, Shabaniah, Hodiah, Benai, and Baninu. The leaders of the people, Perosh, Pehath Moab, Elam, Zatu, Benai, Bonai, Asgad, Bibei, Adonijah, Bigvei, Adin, Eta, Hezekiah, Azur, Hadiah, Hashem, Bizei, Harif, Anathoth, Nebei, Magpiash, Meshalam, Heza, Meshizabael, Zadok, Jajua, Pelatiah, Hanan, Aniah, Hoshea, Hananiah, Hashub, Halohesh, Pila, Shobek, Rehum, Hajabna, Measiah, Ahia, Hanan, Anan, Malak, Harim, and Bayana. The rest of the people, priests, Levites, gatekeepers, musicians, temple servants, and all who separated themselves from the neighboring peoples for the sake of the law of God, together with their wives and all their sons and daughters who were able to understand. All these now join their fellow Israelites, the nobles, and bind themselves with a curse and an oath, to follow the Lord of God given through Moses, the servant of God, and to obey carefully all the commands, regulations, and decrees of the Lord our Lord. We promise not to give our daughters in marriage to the peoples around us, or take their daughters for our sons. When the neighboring peoples bring merchandise or grain to sell on the Sabbath, we will not buy from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day. Every seventh year we will forego working the land and we will cancel all debts. We assume the responsibility for carrying out the commands to give a third of a shekel each year for the service of the house of our God, for the bread set out on the table, for the regular grain offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbaths, at the new moon feasts and at the appointed festivals, for the holy offerings, for sin offerings to make atonement for Israel and for all the duties of the house of our God. We, the priests, the Levites and the people, have cast lots to determine when each of our families is to bring to the house of our God at set times each year a contribution of wood to burn on the altar of the Lord our God as it is written in the law. We also assume responsibility for bringing to the house of the Lord each year the first fruits of our crops and of every fruit tree. As it is also written in the law, we will bring the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle, of our herds, and of our flocks to the house of our God, to the priests ministering there. Moreover, we will bring to the storerooms of the house of our God, to the priests, the first of our ground meal, of our grain offerings, of the fruit of all our trees, and of our new wine and olive oil. And we will bring a tithe of our crops to the Levites, for it is the Levites who collect the tithes in all the towns where we work. A priest descended from Aaron is to accompany the Levites when they receive the tithes, and the Levites are to bring a tenth of the tithes up to the house of our God, to the storerooms of the treasury. The people of Israel, including the Levites, are to bring their contributions of grain, new wine, and olive oil to the storerooms, where the articles for the sanctuary and for the ministering priests, the gatekeepers, and the musicians are also kept. 
we will not neglect the house of our God. Nehemiah chapter 11 Now the leaders of the people settled in Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of every ten of them to live in Jerusalem, the holy city, while the remaining nine were to stay in their own towns. The people commended all who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. These are the provincial leaders who settled in Jerusalem. Now some Israelites, priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants lived in the towns of Judah, each on their own property in the various towns, while other people from both Judah and Benjamin lived in Jerusalem. From the descendants of Judah, Attiah, son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahalel, a descendant of Pires, and Maasiah, son of Baruch, the son of Colhose, the son of Haziah, the son of Adiah, the son of Joyarib, the son of Zechariah, a descendant of Shelah. The descendants of Pires who lived in Jerusalem totaled 468 men of standing. From the descendants of Benjamin, Salu, son of Meshulam, the son of Joed, the son of Pediah, the son of Koliah, the son of Maasiah, the son of Ithiel, the son of Jeshiah, and his followers, Gabai and Salai, 928 men. Joel, son of Zikri, was their chief officer, and Judah, son of Hasanua, was over the new quarter of the city. From the priests, Jediah, the son of Joyarib, Jachin, Sariah, son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Mariah, the son of Ahitub, the official in charge of the house of God, and their associates who carried on work for the temple, 822 men. Adiah, son of Jeroham, the son of Pelaliah, the son of Amzai, the son of Zechariah, the son of Pashur, the son of Malkijah, and his associates who were heads of families, 242 men. Amashai, son of Azarel, the son of Azai, the son of Meshilamoth, the son of Imma, and his associates who were men of standing, 128. Their chief officer was Zabdiel, son of Hagadolim. From the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashub, the son of Azraikam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Bunai, Shabbatai and Josabad, two of the heads of the Levites who had charge of the outside work of the house of God, Mataniah, son of Micah, the son of Zabdai, the son of Asaph, the director, who led in thanksgiving and prayer, Bakbukiah, second among his associates, and Abda, son of Shemua, the son of Galal, the son of Jeduthun. The Levites in the holy city totaled 284. The gatekeepers, Akab, Talmon, and their associates who kept watch at the gates, 172 men. The rest of the Israelites, with the priests and Levites, were in all the towns of Judah, each on their ancestral property. The temple servants lived on the hill of Ophel, and Zihar and Gishpah were in charge of them. The chief officer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Ozai, son of Bani, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micah. Ozai was one of Asaph's descendants, who were the musicians responsible for the service of the house of God. The musicians were under the king's orders, which regulated their daily activity. Petahiah, son of Meshizabil, one of the descendants of Zerah, son of Judah, was the king's agent in all affairs relating to the people. As for the villages with their fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Arba and its surrounding settlements, in Dibon and its settlements, in Jechapziel and its villages, in Jeshua, in Moleda, in Beth Pilet, in Hazashua, in Beersheba and its settlements, in Ziklag, in Makona and its settlements, in Enrimon, in Zora, in Jamuth, Zenoa, Adalam and their villages, in Lachish and its fields, and Ezekah and its settlements. So they were living all the way from Beersheba to the valley of Hinnom. The descendants of the Benjaminites 
from Jeba, lived in Mikmash, Ija, Bethel, and its settlements, in Anathoth, Nob, and Ananiah, in Hazor, Ramah, and Gitaim, in Hadid, Zeboim, and Nebalat, in Lod and Ono, and in Jeharashim. Some of the divisions of the Levites of Judah settled in Benjamin. Nehemiah chapter 12 These were the priests and Levites who returned with Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and with Joshua. Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Maloch, Hatush, Shechaniah, Rehum, Meramoth, Idom, Ginnathon, Abijah, Majamin, Moadiah, Bilgah, Shemaiah, Joyarib, Jediah, Salu, Amok, Hilkiah, and Jediah. These were the leaders of the priests and their associates in the days of Joshua. The Levites were Jeshua, Binuai, Kadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and also Mataniah, who together with his associates was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. Bakbukiah and Onai, their associates, stood opposite them in the services. Joshua was the father of Joachim, Joachim the father of Eliashib, Eliashib the father of Joiada, Joiada the father of Jonathan, and Jonathan the father of Jadua. In the days of Joachim, these were the heads of the priestly families. Of Sariah's family, Mariah. Of Jeremiah's, Hananiah. Of Ezra's, Meshulam. Of Amariah's, Jehohanan. Of Maluk's, Jonathan. Of Shechaniah's, Joseph. Of Harim's, Adna. Of Meramoth's, Helkai. Of Ido's, Zachariah. Of Ginnathon's, Meshulam. Of Abijah's, Zikri. Of Maniamin's, and of Moadiah's, Piltei. Of Bilgah's, Shamua, of Shemaiah's, Jehonathan, of Joyarib's, Matanai, of Jediah's, Ozai, of Salu's, Kalai, of Amok's, Eber, of Hilkiah's, Hashabiah, of Jediah's, Nethanel. The family heads of the Levites in the days of Eliashib, Joiada, Johanan, and Jadua, as well as those of the priests, were recorded in the reign of Darius the Persian. The family heads among the descendants of Levi, up to the time of Johanan, son of Eliashib, were recorded in the Book of the Annals. And the leaders of the Levites were Hashabiah, Sherebiah, Jeshua, son of Kadmiel, and their associates, who stood opposite them to give praise and thanksgiving, one section responding to the other, as prescribed by David the man of God. Mataniah, Bakbukiah, Obadiah, Mesholam, Talmon, and Akub were gatekeepers who guarded the storerooms of the gates. They served in the days of Joachim, son of Joshua, the son of Jozadek, and in the days of Nehemiah the governor and of Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites were sought out from where they lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres. The musicians were also brought together from the region around Jerusalem. From the villages of the Natophathites, from Beth Gilgal, and from the area of Jeba and Asmaveth, for the musicians had built villages for themselves around Jerusalem. When the priests and Levites had purified themselves ceremonially, they purified the people, the gates, and the wall. I had the leaders of Judah go up on top of the wall. I also assigned two large choirs to give thanks. One was to proceed on top of the wall to the right, towards the dung gate. Hoshia and half the leaders of Judah followed them, along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshalam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, Jeremiah, as well as some priests with trumpets, and also Zechariah, son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zakur, the son of Asaph, and his associates. Shemaiah, Azarel, Milalai, Gilalai, Mei, Nathanel, Judah, and Hanani, with musical instruments prescribed by David the man of God. Ezra, the teacher of the law, led the procession. At the fountain gate, they continued directly up the steps of the city of David, on the ascent to the wall, 
and passed above the site of David's palace to the water gate on the east. The second choir proceeded in the opposite direction. I followed them on top of the wall together with half the people, past the tower of the ovens to the broad wall, over the gate of Ephraim, the Jishana gate, the fish gate, the tower of Hananel, and the tower of the hundred, as far as the sheep gate. At the gate of the guard they stopped. The two choirs that gave thanks then took their places in the house of God. So did I, together with half the officials, as well as the priests, Eliakim, Maasiah, Meniamin, Micaiah, Eleoenai, Zechariah, and Hananiah with their trumpets, and also Maasiah, Shemaiah, Eleazar, Uzai, Jehohanan, Malkijah, Elam, and Ezer. The choirs sang under the direction of Jezrehiah. And on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. At that time, men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for the contributions, first fruits, and tithes. From the fields around the towns, they were to bring into the storerooms the portions required by the law for the priests and the Levites, for Judah was pleased with the ministering priests and Levites. They performed the service of their God and the service of purification, as did also the musicians and gatekeepers, according to the commands of David and his son Solomon. For long ago, in the days of David and Asaph, there had been directors for the musicians and for the songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. So in the days of Zerubbabel and of Nehemiah, all Israel contributed the daily portions for the musicians and the gatekeepers. They also set aside the portion for the other Levites, and the Levites set aside the portion for the descendants of Aaron. Romans chapter 2 You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of His kindness, forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking, and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first to the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. This will take place on the day when God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and boast in God, 
If you know his will and approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of little children, because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then, who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Circumcision has value if you observe the law. But if you break the law, you have become as though you had not been circumcised. So then, if those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you, who even, though you have the written code and circumcision, are a lawbreaker. A person is not a Jew who is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart, by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. Psalm 17 Hear me, Lord. My plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people tried to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent, through what your lips have commanded. My steps have held to your paths. My feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, you who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. They close up their callous hearts, and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down. They now surround me, with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They're like a lion hungry for prey, like a fierce lion crouching in cover. Rise up, Lord. Confront them. Bring them down. With your sword, rescue me from the wicked. By your hand, save me from such people, Lord, from those of this world whose reward is in this life. May what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it, and may there be leftovers for their little ones. As for me, I will be vindicated and will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. Proverbs chapter 12 Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Good people obtain favor from the Lord, but he condemns those who devise wicked schemes. No one can be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, 
but the house of the righteous stands firm. A person is praised according to their prudence, and one with a warped mind is despised. Better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no food. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. The wicked desire the stronghold of evildoers, but the root of the righteous endures. Evildoers are trapped by their sinful talk, and so the innocent escape trouble. From the fruit of their lips people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands bring them reward. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. No harm overtakes the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. The prudent keep their knowledge to themselves, but a fool's heart blurts out folly. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. In the way of righteousness there is life. Along that path is immortality.